welcome to Tramlines, a podcast from Agri. I'm your host, Tony Smith, putting your questions to the experts. Today, we're going to explore the role of young farmers clubs with a specific focus on this year's theme. YFC is for everyone. With more than 500 young farmers clubs throughout England and Wales, and over 23,000 young people enjoying taking part in YFC activities every week, there's a whole host of social and learning opportunities for anyone who has a love of the countryside. YFC is for everyone, consolidates the National Federation of Young Farmers Clubs ongoing and existing work on inclusion, diversity, well-being and behaviour, as well as the many diverse education and career opportunities within agriculture. Four young farmers have joined me this morning, and I must point out that you don't actually have to be a farmer to join a young farmers club. So let's start with some introductions. Uh, could each of you briefly share your role, either with Young Farmers Clubs or within your organisation, and what first attracted you to YFC? Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm Luke Cox. I'm an arable farmer from Gloucestershire. Um, I've been involved in Young Farmers since I turned 10, um, so that's 18 years now, um, and been involved in all sorts of capacities and very fortunate now to be the YFC Agri Chair. So I represent the views of our 23,000 members on all agricultural and rural issues. Um, I've been part of the group for a number of years now and um, yeah, very honoured to now be able to chair that group. Yeah, fantastic. And what what first attracted you to uh, to become a YFC member? I think it's the opportunities that it opens up. I mean, it's, it's so varied in what you can do in young farmers, whether it's agricultural and rural related or whether it's something completely different like floral art. Um, I've, I've had a go at pretty much everything. Um, some more successfully than others but um, yeah the opportunities that it gives you to try new things um, and meet new people in the industry is, is fantastic. Uh, Poppy uh, could you introduce yourself and what do you do and what first attracted you to uh, to young farmers? Yeah thanks Tony so my name is Poppy Bunting I am a crop input specialist with Agri um, but I am also a long-standing member of Deerham Young Farmers um, over in Norfolk and I'm now actually very fortunate to be joint county chair of, of Norfolk as well this year. Um, I think actually originally it was my, my dad was in Young Farmers years ago so he was the, the one probably that said to me go along and, and have a go uh, and see what it's all about then you sort of start talking to a few various people and, and you get different stories from everyone you think actually yeah this sounds like a real opportunity to get involved in a whole range of different activities, competitions, um, and, and events and, and, and so on so uh, yeah no just it was, I was curious to see what it was all about. Uh, and Josh how about you you know what what do you do what's your current role and uh, yeah how did you get into Young Farmers what attracted you to join? Thanks Tony so yeah my name is Josh Bryan I'm a trainee agronomist with Agri I've recently joined but I've been a part of my Young Farmers uh, Ships and Young Farmers in South Warwickshire ever since I was about 14 years old. Uh, I joined because a friend of mine sat next to me, uh, he was originally going and he thought I'd really enjoy it. I wanted to get into the industry as the school I went to was not a rural school, um, but I wanted to get into the farming industry. So he took me along and ever since then, I've really enjoyed it. And this year I'll be going for a role as vice chairman on the committee. Um, I've had a chance to build the relationships that I've got in and out of the Young Farmers Club. I've built a network of friends, I've built relationships and I've got the opportunity to build an amazing career from from the club. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to where the club is going this year. We've got some very young members that are looking to take some roles on as well. So, yeah, excited. Um, let's move on a bit and explore some of the value of the uh, Young Farmers Clubs. You know, YFCs are known for their broad range of activities and opportunities. You know, to ask a couple of you, you know, what do you think are some of the most valuable aspects of being involved with YFC, both for your own personal development and that community building? Joshua, let's just build on what you just shared just now. It sounds like you, you've, you know, you've had some great experiences. Yes, I mean, certainly. I mean, at places like our competition day um, that we held every Young Farmers year um, within Warwickshire Young Farmers, we hold a competition uh, for crop weed and pest identification, which I mean directly relates to what I'm doing now and is built from that. So, um, but yeah, it's all the same engaging with the farmers, building that confidence to have a conversation, be approachable, and speak to a range of people that you've may never known and you may, you may never have known. Yeah. And the big question though, Josh, uh, did you win? 
Uh, I didn't actually because it's many years ago. Um, so I was up against, uh, yeah, someone a bit older than me. Yeah, but as, as a trainee agronomist now, of course you'd go back and win it now, wouldn't you? Of course, of course. Poppy, from your perspective, what unique opportunities does YFC offer that might surprise those who aren't familiar with it? Yeah, I think, I mean, for me, one thing always stands out is actually just the range of opportunity there is to get involved with people uh, with different companies from different industries not just within agriculture I mean obviously we have close links to a lot of agricultural businesses but it's amazing and never fails to amaze me just where young farmers do <laughs> do get and what who they do end up getting involved with I mean there's always opportunities to go and look around different businesses or to actually work with them closely so we do a massive amount of fundraising as well um, which is really important to highlight and I think it's just, as someone said, you know, already said before, it's just the vast range of opportunities that, that there are. But also within club level, I think it's really important as well that often people come along and they, they want to be a, a member of Young Farmers, but they don't necessarily realise just where that might take them. I mean, there's opportunities to get involved at uh, committee level within your own club or as, you know, myself, I've gone on to then be involved at, at county level. Uh, and there's also opportunity to then work up in, into a, a regional or, or even a national level. So you never n- quite know where it might end up taking. I, I, I love this theme that you're both talking about, which is just opportunities and that relevance also in terms of, you know, working in farming and agriculture, which brings us uh, on a little bit to, well, this year's theme, which is Young Farmers is for Everyone. So with that strong focus on inclusivity, you know, how do you think YFCs are fostering that inclusivity and making sure that everyone, regardless of their background, feels welcome? Uh, Luke, let's ask you here, you know, can you share any examples of how YFC has successfully attracted members from non-traditional farming backgrounds? What are your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. I think actually uh, Josh and Poppy have really touched on uh, the opportunity that being a leader within clubs and counties gives you because one of the key roles of being a leader is actually to to create those opportunities for other people and what Young Farmers does really well is puts on varied club programs so most clubs have weekly meetings one week it might be about um, livestock judging the next week it'll be mini golf so there's this huge opportunity for different people to come in meet new people um, and like you say bringing people from different backgrounds that can actually get to um, yeah mix with people from rural backgrounds understand more about farming but actually we don't just do farming things there's there's so many things we do and that's also reflecting the competitions we do again um josh has talked about some of the co- competitions he's done in the past that you could argue are very related to farming um but i've already mentioned that i've competed at floral art before we have lots of sport competitions in young farmers as well um and they all provide a really good platform to, to bring anyone in from all sorts of different backgrounds um together and uh, have a bit of fun so, so the mini golf, is that about diversity in farming or is that just fun? Uh, it's definitely fun, but also competition. Um, but yeah, important that we, we aren't just doing farming and rural things. And, and there's so many things that people from different backgrounds come in and get involved in. Uh, Poppy, here's, here's a, you know, a, a further question on that, because let's remind ourselves this year's theme is Young Farmers is for Everyone. You know, how can Young Farmers clubs continue to evolve to ensure that they're accessible and appealing to a diverse range of people. Yeah, I think so. To touch on what Luke's already said, I mean, I think one thing we've always been quite good at in Young Farmers is promoting what we do. However, I think until quite recently, we've been very good at doing that within our own communities and networks. And we've only probably more recently, in the last few years, started to get better at promoting that to a wider audience and just taking that a little bit further. So I think that's something that people have started to recognise now is, you know, for all of those of us, you know, that are very fortunate to be connected to agriculture already, we're probably very good about talking about that and, and sharing that with each other. But it's how do we start to actually take that message a little bit further? Um, and so I think social media has been really, really useful um, for that. You know, we, um, my, through my own club experiences, we sort of use our um, Instagram page to sort of promote what we're doing within local communities. And I think that started to, we've certainly seen that in our, um, in our own club, that that started to reach more people now. And I think naturally that has a positive um, knock on effect because the more people from, like you say, from different backgrounds, different industries, we start to, you know, start to, they have an interest in young farmers, they start to come along, they bring more people. And all of a sudden we have this massive network now of people from all different um, backgrounds. I think that's, yeah, that's really important. Uh, let's move on. Uh, 
I've heard so much about your skills development and, and connecting your young farmers clubs to your, your career and those opportunities that you just talked about that network in there, Poppy. So, you know, young farmers clubs are often seen as that uh, a gateway to developing a wide range of skills. What are some of the most valuable skills members can gain through young farmers clubs? And how do these skills translate to careers, both within and outside of agriculture? Josh, what are your thoughts there? I think it gives us the confidence to explore the opportunities around us. For example, I went travelling for about two years of my life. Um, and the only reason I did that is because I had the connections from young farmers members to go out to Australia, New Zealand, Canada, places like that. Um, I had those connections already in place with farms that, you know, other members had worked on or other members have been out to. Um, so it was having that confidence to be able to travel the world, knowing that no matter where I went, I was still able to be around somebody who knew somebody or somebody who had a connection with somebody. And, and, and Luke, how was Young Farmers Clubs helped you or others you know you may know of in pursuing a career that might not be directly related to farming have you got any any examples there i have absolutely i mean i think from a personal perspective the the public speaking that i've done through young farmers pretty much since i was 10 has made a massive difference to what i've been able to do in my work um i don't think i've ever had the confidence to stand up in front of large groups of people and talk about the issues that affect young farmers without that and that's obviously transferable to people in roles outside of farming as well. Um, but if I come back to the floral art example, um, to use that one again, we've got people in our clubs who have competed in floral art competitions and now run their own floristry business. So I think wherever you look and whatever you do in Young Farmers and all the new things that you get the opportunity to try, people will find something they really enjoy, have a passion for and pursue that, whatever it might be. So, so for young people who might not have a farming background, but are looking to develop their leadership or entrepreneurial skills, how does Young Farmers support those goals? Yeah, absolutely. So as we touched on already, there's the opportunity to get involved um, with committees, not just in your club, but also through a county or even regional area. And that really is a unique opportunity to be able to to, to practice leadership uh, and work with other committee members to help deliver uh, you know, achievements for, for your club. Um, there's also a, a whole range of initiatives um, around helping young people to get that first step into whatever their, you know, their business might be or into agricultural career or actually into any other career path. And, and so, so far that three of you have talked about the benefits to you, but also what you've noticed as to how Young Farmers Clubs have helped others. So Young Farmers Clubs have a, a, a really strong reputation for their community engagement. So in what ways do you think Young Farmers Clubs contribute to that, that well-being of the rural community and, and how can they have a positive impact on urban areas as well? Uh, Luke, perhaps you might have some thoughts. Yeah, Young Farmers, like you said, has got a really strong reputation for, for working for great causes. And I know that clubs across um, the UK organise events for charity, whether it's balls, whether it's uh, more public-facing events. I know one of the the clubs near me um, for the last at least three years organised a tractor run around their local area um, at Christmas time, dressed up in Christmas lights. Um, and I think most recently they raised over £16,000 for charity through this tractor run, which was just members giving up their time to decorate their tractors and, and parade them around the local area. So um, there's numerous examples out there of, of clubs doing great work for charity. Yeah. Uh, and Poppy, how do Young Farmers Clubs support their members uh, with regards to mental health and well-being? I think first and foremost, um, naturally you do support each other. Being a part of a club and a part of a community, it's really important actually that you know people have that outlet they have once a week. You go and meet with your Young Farmers Club and just talking is really important, being together, listening. Over in Norfolk, we work quite closely with uh, YANA, which is a mental health um, organisation and charity specifically for and people working in rural areas and on farm so I think we also work closely with other charities like that so we, we can't necessarily always fully support our members in the club we, we work in closely with those organisations um, already to make sure we can offer that support if, if needed. You know what I'm hearing from all three of you is, is so rich in terms of experience from young farmers clubs it, it really is um, really inspiring Looking ahead, looking to the future, you know, what do you think are the biggest challenges and opportunities for Young Farmers Clubs in continuing to attract new members and staying relevant to the younger generation? So I think obviously um, a, a lot of what Young Farmers do is based around the rural community and rural life. And I suppose um, with my YFC Agri Chair hat on, I suppose the biggest challenges that, that we face as a sector 
uh, things like access to land and access to finance. And actually, to have a, a thriving young farmers organisation, you need a thriving farming community. And it's really difficult for young people to get into farming with those two big barriers in their way. Um, so support and guidance for, for farmers who are looking to um, enter the industry, not necessarily from farming backgrounds. We've got plenty of people who are coming from external backgrounds and looking to get into farming that come up against these same barriers of needing large amounts of capital to get involved or not being able to get on the land because they're being outbid on tenancies. Yeah. And, and, and Josh, you know, what changes or innovations do you think are needed to keep young farmers clubs thriving into the future? Like Poppy said, it's about using our social media presence as well to spread our message of what we're trying to do. And also, I think part of it is as well as keeping our core values. Young Farmers has lasted for so long because of the core values that the groups have and the communities have. We still got to keep that core value of being a community, having the older members to be a role model and show how we're going to go forward, but also having the new ideas of how we can, um, like you said, help the urban areas or uh, change the the image of young farmers that it is for everyone and that no matter your background, no matter your age, um, everyone can join. Yeah. And Poppy, what role do you see young farmers clubs playing in that in that broader conversation about sustainability and the future of farming? Well, I think first and foremost, you know, many of the, the our members in young farmers already, you know, will be people taking these new ideas forward in the industry. You know, we already have members that are doing amazing things on their family farms or within the industry. And I think there is a real appetite um, to, you know, to tackle the challenges that we are facing head on. Absolutely. Um, finally, let's talk about the role of sponsors, a um, really important role here. So for Josh and, and Poppy, uh, you work for Agri. You know, how do you see your company's partnership with Young Farmers Clubs contributing to, to those goals of inclusivity and accessibility? And what excites you most about the collaboration? There is real value, like Young Farmers is noticed by everyone, not just the little community, it is the big corporations, it's everyone that notices the impact that Young Farmers has. And I think it shows by Agri sponsorship that um, it's going to add real value to its members, to the Young Farmers coming through, to the community that is there within British farming. Yeah. And Luke, for you as a farmer, in what ways do you think corporate partnerships like this can help Young Farmers Clubs achieve its missions? Yeah, they're hugely important to have partnerships like this. And as you said, they are partnerships. They're where we can work together. Um, and we've talked a lot about the opportunities that young farmers provide. And it's not just when you're a young farmer within the ages of 10 to 28. It's also beyond that as well. And the connections that you get from partnerships like this are hugely valuable going forward. Um, and Poppy and Josh are probably two prime examples of, of where these collaborative partnerships can take you. So as we come towards the end of our podcast, I'd love to hear from each of you and ask for one final piece of advice for young people who might be considering joining YFC but are unsure if it's right for them. Poppy, what words sum up YFC and YFC is for everyone? I think first and foremost, fun. I think there's an awful lot of different, like we said before, opportunities for young farmers, different things to get involved in. But the absolute underlying theme of everything there is it's all about having fun. And I think that's really important not to ever lose sight of that. Um, and I think, yeah, inclusivity, I think it's definitely something I've experienced. We have a broad range of members and there is, you know, we want to keep that going going forward. And Josh, what are the do's and don'ts for young people thinking of joining Young Farmers? Coming up will be uh, a lot of the club's new members evenings, which is a perfect opportunity to go because everyone will be in the same case as you. Everyone will be in a similar scenario that it is about joining and asking the questions and, um, yeah, about starting to build that those connections. But don't be scared. Don't be worried that you're going to have to come every single week. You don't have to. You can be as flexible as you like. And Luke, what would be your message for everyone taking part in the National Young Farmers Week? Um, I think, we've again, we've talked a lot about opportunity. So I suppose I'd say bring a friend along. Um, there's so much opportunity within Young Farmers. People don't necessarily realise that. I think Poppy touched on the fact we don't always advertise the great things we do as well as we could because it's, it's often difficult to do that. So, yeah bring a friend, friend along and make sure that as many people as possible get the opportunity to enjoy everything that YFC offers. Thank you, Luke, Poppy and Josh for talking today about the YFC experience. That's it for this podcast, but do tune in again as we meet the experts throughout the season, exploring the many immediate and longer term questions for growers and farmers in the UK. 
If you have any questions that you would like us to ask the experts, email info at agri.co.uk. See you next time. Thank you.